All right, Kevin, Darren, we're going to be talking about the TrackMan fundamental, which is maximizing distance. So we're going to be looking at how to maximize your ball speed, launch angle, and spin rate based off your club speed and then also your attack angle. So I know you all work a lot on attack angle and trying to get those numbers as good as possible. So we're going to kind of be looking at you know, what you feel, Kevin, when you're trying to work on your attack angle, and then Darren, what you're looking for in a swing. What do you notice when it's bad? What do you notice when it's good? Kevin, let's have you go ahead and hit a couple shots for us. Okay. All right, Kevin, come over and take a look at these numbers and we'll kind of look at a starting point for you. So if we look at these different shots that you just hit, first one, tack angle, negative two and a half, second one, negative 2.2, third one, negative 1.3. So, I mean, not bad at all. I mean, just a little bit down. But if we're really trying to maximize these numbers, you know, we try and get the attack angle a little on the positive if possible. Uh, if we're looking at some of the launch numbers that you have, you know, launch angle of nine degrees, maybe a little bit on the low side. Spin rates, quite good. I mean, low 2000s, I mean, you can't beat that. You just need to get the ball up a little bit in the air, maybe that'll help get a little bit more carry out of it. Yeah. So, from your perspective, what is it that you're trying to feel or do when you're trying to get that attack angle a little bit more neutral or on the positive? Sure, well, this is something Darren and I have worked on for the past two and a half years, and when I started with him, I was almost negative six or seven on my driver attack angle, and what that forces you to do, you're obviously hitting down on it quite a bit, but you're also swinging the club pretty far left and, and it creates a lot of extra spin. Um, ball gets up in the air and, and um, you just get zero roll. Um, I'm always trying to shallow out my attack angle um, in order to optimize launch conditions like we're talking about. For me, it's the feeling of getting further behind the ball and then staying further behind the ball for as long as possible. My tendency is to kind of lean on it and then fire my hips towards the ball, creating almost like a whiplash at the ball versus a rotational hit with my body rotation. And um, so Darren and I are always working on getting my left shoulder further behind the ball, having a nice slow, smooth transition, and then kicking my weight across with my lower body and then can rotate from there, shallowing out the club earlier and allow you to hit on the up. Okay. Uh, let me, if you can show us, and Darren, if you can, you know, kind of walk us through as well what you're looking for sure. in a swing and kind of, you know, talk us through what you're, you were just explaining as far as your hips and getting deeper. Sure. So if we, if we consider the spine angle at address, the top of the spine slightly behind the belt buckle. So if we then draw a line at right angles to that, that should be kind of the angle that we would want to swing the club up on if we're going to have an upward hit with the numbers on the track mat. If that angle changes dynamically when it comes into the ball now, we've now got a downward angle and the club's going to produce minus numbers. So if we've got this angle at address, that's a part of posture. We're trying to keep this dynamically when he's making a move from this view, front on. So when he turns behind it, we've still got this angle here. And then as he changes direction into his left side, he's still got this angle. So now as he rotates from here, the angle is maintained dynamically so the numbers should level out. So as long as I'm holding Kevin's left shoulder in the transition as he moves into his left side, this is gonna feel like it's a little bit behind the ball from, for him, and that's gonna keep his spine angle this way as he rotates through it. So you talked about spine angle there. Is there anything else that you're looking for? Or is that the main focus? Or, or what else helps dictate these positive numbers that you're looking for? The other area that we want to make sure of that he's staying in dynamic posture as he's changing direction is his ability to maintain the axis of the spine as if his backside or his glutes were against a wall here. So what we're looking for is him for him to change direction and not come off of this wall as he starts down. And what that enables it to what that enables the outside of the range to do is come into the ball on a shallow attack angle, but also with the shaft coming into the into the hitting area at the appropriate angle relative to the club that Kevin's using. And we just keep an eye on that with the, the swing plane number that comes up on the track map. So we're looking at it from two dimensions, from the front and down the line. From the front spine angle, from the neck to the belt buckle in transition, and from down the line where the, the glutes are staying in relation to the wall to keep his depth. That's creating the right angle of attack, but also making the shafts come, which comes back to the right angle. I'm always keeping a very close eye on my attack angle and my vertical swing plane. And uh, those two numbers, you know, when I'm dealing with my woods, are, are, are really strong indicators of how, how I'm hitting the golf ball, how straight I'm hitting the golf ball. And, and like we said, we use these numbers 
you know, almost on a daily basis for me to maintain and, and to keep an eye on where my golf swing is. You know, I know day to day I'm getting better if these numbers are getting better. So for me, I'm always trying to lower my vertical swing plane by getting this right hip as deep and into the wall as possible like Darren talked about. Now the longer I hold that and the smoother I am in my transition, the more time the club has to fall in front of me and shallow out before the golf ball. Therefore, bringing down your attack angle. So when I get my attack angle near zero, my vertical swing plane, you know, in the mid 40s, golf ball's flying really straight, optimizing all my other numbers on their own. All right, Kevin, uh, let's go ahead and see you hit a couple more shots. You know, try and feel what you all are working on and let's see how the numbers change. All right, Kevin, I think you did what you were trying to do. Let's uh, take a look at those numbers. So if we look here, the attack angle is now a positive two. The launch angle is now up to 12. Spin rate's still about the same, but we talked about how that was already good before. We just needed to get the ball up in the air a little bit more, which you did that using your attack angle to help launch the ball. And now you can see that the carry on that particular shot, 282, if we look down here at the side, we had 258, 267, 252, and 282. I mean, it's a massive difference, and the primary difference was really just kind of launching that ball up in the air. Sure.